I usually like to go start from the very, very, you know, basics, from the very basics. And the basics is that if you are doing research, the essence of your research purpose is to use it to affect humanity. Once it's outside of that scope, then it's selfish research, then it's not useful. The essence of your research would be for you to solve a problem that man has. Please let that be the focus. How can my research go beyond the pages of the journal, go beyond my laboratory to affect someone's life? Let that be settled in your heart that this is why you're doing research. Now, having said that, the next thing you want to do is to ask yourself, where, at what level is my research based on the technological readiness level, based on the market readiness level, based on the commercial readiness level? We have dealt with this in the past, so you may want to go to the videos, go to the live section of this channel, and you find the video and you watch it. It's very important for you to assess now the innovation readiness level of your of your research, very important, so that you have an understanding of what is the next stage you need to go to, what are the risks involved at this particular stage where you are now, and then you can then be able to navigate, you know, the process and the journey going forward in a very well-informed manner. That is it. That is it. So these are the very basic principles. But there's something else I want to share as you begin to think of how to um, get into the marketplace. The, there's something called commercialization, research commercialization pathway, the research commercialization journey. As a researcher, I'm not, I'm, I want to assume I'm speaking to researchers. I want to assume I'm speaking to staff of universities and um, polytechnics and colleges of education, right? Right. So the first stage is the phase stage we call pre-disclosure. That is at the stage where you have your concepts, but you're yet to do something about it you're yet to tell your university or your institution about your research. That is the first stage. That's the first stage. You're still doing your thing in your laboratory. The university is yet to know. Good. But from there, you then move to the next stage, which is what disclosure. At this stage, your institution now understands that you have something that is phenomenal that you want to push out there. That is the second stage. That is the second stage. So when you go to them, they give you forms to fill you know they ask you questions you disclose your innovation to them or rather your invention to them from there you move on to the next stage which is the stage of evaluation now this stage you're almost not doing anything at this stage but it's your school your institution that is acting at this stage what are they supposed to be doing they're supposed to be doing preliminary evaluation assessment of your invention Number two, they're supposed to be doing technological evaluation of your invention. And number three, they're supposed to be doing commercial evaluation of your invention. These are basically the three things that are supposed to be doing at this stage. Then from that stage, it begins to get interesting. If they say, yes, this that you have makes sense, this that you have is something we want to ride on with, then you go to the next stage. The next stage is where you go to protect your innovation. You want to protect your innovation you want to patent it or you know own it basically right so that is the next stage and also within this stage is what we call the protection uh, the development stage so you you know go ahead to do your prototype development minimum viable products and all of that stuff you want to further develop your product um in order to climb the technology the next level um, ladder now now once you get to this point there are two possible pathways. That's the pathway of licensing or the pathway of a spin out. I will explain. Two pathways. Pathways, pathway of what? Licensing or pathway of, of, um, of spin out. Licensing is when you're going to give it to an organization, a company to say, hey, you take this intellectual property, you take this, you go ahead to use it to solve a problem in your own market or in your industry to improve your processes or what have you, whatever you wish that you would do with this intellectual property, go ahead and do with it. Now, that is the second, that is the licensing strategy or pathway. The other pathway is spin out. When you create a company, make a company out of the intellectual property, when you make a company out of the intellectual property, that we say is the spin out strategy. 
tonight i want to focus on the spin out strategy because we are discussing market entry strategies for innovators right next time or another time i'm going to be looking at licensing in more detail but this tonight is going to be spin out creating a technology creating a whole company rather out of your technology out of your intellectual property we're looking at market entry strategies in a spin out market entry strategies in a spin out how does that work how does that work good if you're here listening to me and you want to build a business out of your research this is you this is for you you want to build the real uh, business out of your research this is for you that's what we're going to be discussing now a spin out um strategy a spin out strategy market entry uh, strategies in a spin out first of all what is a spin out you may be hearing this for the first time uh what exactly is a spin out a spin out is a subsidiary or independent company created from a larger organization a larger institution a larger research organization university polytechnic what have you now it has its own unique challenges opportunities and it's able to go out there to serve its customers with a unique value proposition different from what that of its parent what organization parent institution now this this can be in form of a subsidiary or what have you right but we're saying that this is now an independent venture an independent venture emanating from a parent organization a parent institution that's what a spin out is it has its own unique value proposition and it has its own unique market segment simple that is what a spin out is some of you are maybe interested to have a spin out now that is amazing that would be great right you want to have a company venture that is going to um, work with your technology to meet the needs of a defined customer segment. Amazing, amazing place to be. Tonight, we're going to be discussing the strategies that will be relevant for you to achieve your dreams of building a spin out. Do your lecturer, do your lecturer, do your researcher. OK, um, there are different layers to this different layers on how to get into the market um different layers but the layer we're going to look at now is tonight is going to be the customer development layer customer development how do you develop your customer how do you develop the customer because i what i teach and what i recommend for researchers is that your entire commercialization efforts should be customer centric don't just do stuff for doing sake no there should be what a focus which is to solve the problem of a defined customer segment you want to solve the problem of a defined customer segment right so your research commercialization efforts should be what customer centric so this evening we're going to be discussing the customer development um level the customer development level of of um market entry market entry strategies for your spin out that's what we're going to be discussing tonight i hope you're ready i hope you're ready now imagine your technology imagine building a business out of it and we're talking about you building up what a customer developing a customer base and we're saying that this is the your strategy this is your strategy you want to build a business that is customer centric you don't want to build a business that is in a vacuum and then you finish and you're looking for who exactly is my customer no from the beginning of your research it has to be clear who your customer is and tonight i want to discuss with us customer development strategies for your spin out simply simply put because customer development will be one of those strategies for your market entry all right now with respect to your spin out number one principle i want you to note because there are a number of principles but number one principle I want you to note is that the single necessary and sufficient condition for a spin out business is a paying customer. The very simple and single necessary requirement to say that, yes, we have a spin out business is a paying customer. Once you have a paying customer, congratulations, congratulations, you have a spin out business. So your focus is look, I need to have a paying customer. I need to have someone whose needs I'm going to meet and who in return is going to give me some money. That is what the first requirement 
of a, uh, of a spin out business. You don't have a business, a spin out business, until someone is able to give you money. Until someone is able to give you money. This is very critical. And that person that will give you money is what? A customer. Is this customer? The day someone gives you money is the day you have a spin out business, not a day before. A day someone gives you money in exchange for the service, for the value you're rendering, is the day you have a business, not a day before. Now, the next principle I want to share is that creating an innovative product where no market currently exists is essential to the success of your spin out business, right? So you want to focus on creating a business in a market where there is really no market in, in existence, right? Now, of course, we have situations where you can also create a market or create a business where um, a market currently exists, but the ideal thing for a researcher is to focus on solving a problem where uh, nobody else is solving it, meet a need that nobody else is meeting. And that is why you're a researcher. That's why you go to the laboratory, you ask the right questions, and then you come out with something that is unique for non-consumers, for non-consumers. You want to focus to build a solution for non-consumers, those whose needs are not yet met. This is your calling as a researcher. Take it. This is your calling as a researcher. You want to meet the needs of non-consumers. So this, this second principle is for you to build your business in a market that doesn't exist yet, that doesn't exist yet. And um, uh, we're going to look at some principles or some steps to doing that. But um, just take these principles, general principles, first of all, let's look at them and um, build the foundation, build the foundation for your um, spin out business. Now, listen, by creating a new market, what happens is that you now have a very high, if not a dominant market share that you can now have as a basis for future expansion. This is what we call the beachhead market. When you go into a new market, right, when you create a new market, what happens is that no matter how small or big that market is, you dominate it. You dominate it. You gather data. You understand how that market works. You learn from your mistakes because you are alone in that tiny small market. You have now, you, you can, you can, you can, be able to experiment with little resources because it's a small market and you are learning. You are learning in the process. You are a researcher. You don't have all the money. You are there to learn, understand how your product is fitting with the needs of the market. You want to understand that there is a meeting point, a synchronization between the needs and the seats of the market, right? So this is something very critical you want to do. You want to have the understanding that if you should capture a small market, then you can dominate that market and from there you have the leverage to go to adjacent markets you have the leverage to go to what adjacent markets very very important now this is one principle i uh the principles you know that i really think that you should have now as we get into the uh market entry strategies market entry strategies especially with focus on customer development with focus on customer development. Now, I usually talk about what is worth doing is worth doing well, right? You are a researcher, you have, you want to go the spin out route. There is a secret which I want to drop now and take it as one of the principles too. That secret is that you want to create a new product in a new market you want to create a new product in a new market you want to create a new product in a new market so your product should be new and you should be serving non-consumers people whose needs have not been met before you arrived people who are going through some very you know long routes or who are cutting corners to have their needs met. These are the people you want to target. Very important. Go with a new product, go into a new market. Having said that, if you're not able to go with a new product into a new market, the next thing you can do is to go with a new product into an existing market. Now, this is a market that is already identified. People are already meeting their needs. 
but you can also come with a new product a product they have not seen before but this market already exists but you can go with a product they have not seen before right that is something you can do and that is a better a better uh, another you know way of getting into the market if you cannot go with a new product in a new market go with a new product in an existing market the third thing is the third strategy would be what you're going with an existing product but in a new market an existing product but in a new market right now look at it you come up with a product that is probably existing in another geography in another market maybe this product is in india indians are using it now you take that product and you can adapt it build um, do your research around it and see how that there are no consumers in nigeria who would who this uh, whom this product would solve their needs right now that would become what a new uh, 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 an existing product in a new market you can build your research around that product that already exists and how that it can help a particular defined customer segment right now you're talking about what a new pro a, an existing product in a new market it could even be an existing product in another industry an entirely new industry maybe in the healthcare industry you take up a product there and you're asking yourself how can this product be used in its education industry right so that, that that is another wonderful strategy that you can use but never you find yourself with a an existing product in an existing market basically finding yourself now competing with existing products in an existing market that is not a researcher that is not a researcher don't find yourself doing that you're going to you're going to uh, find out that eventually you burn out eventually you don't make progress eventually um, you don't go far with your products and with your research now this is this is something i thought i should bring to you a notice about building a great spin out bring building a great spin out the next thing i want to talk about is market segmentation you must focus on a particular market segment there is no such thing as building a product for everybody pay attention to this so you don't want to find yourself building a product coming up with doing a research for a product for a service that is meant for everybody there is no such thing you're going to find out that your product will just simply what diffuse out into the thin air is not going to carry the impact relevant to solving the needs of a specified market segment okay so market segment um, market segmentation strategies are things you need to just know to your fingertips knowing that you have to identify a specific customer group and tailor your product to meet their needs and tailor your product to meet their needs very important very important that would matter a lot to achieving the order of magnitude required for you to meet the needs this customer segment now there are seven questions you want to ask if you want to get it right with your customer segmentation seven questions you want to ask so let me just run through these seven questions then we get into customer development problem. seven questions number one is the target customer well funded now you don't want a situation where you focus in a particular segment and they are not well funded they cannot pay for your product and neither is there someone out there that can pay for them right even if they're the consumers but there should be the payers who are buoyant enough and funded enough to fund your products very important very important now researchers i have come across so you know i work with researchers every day so the thing is this most of them want to solve problems for poor people there's nothing wrong with solving problems for poor people but you must know that your customer base must be well funded it must not be the cost the, the poor people themselves that will pay for your products right but as you're serving the poor people you must make sure that there is someone else somewhere that is willing to pay for their consumption very important very important yeah so um 
don't make the mistake of not figuring this out, please. Now, the second thing I want to talk about, the second question you want to ask is that, is the customer segment readily accessible to your available channels? Readily accessible to your available channels. You cannot create a product, you cannot create a service for a people you don't have access to. Very important. Question is, what are your channels? What are your available channels? You cannot create a product for people you don't have access to. You, don't, you cannot reach them don't have access to them i was was it on friday yeah thursday or friday i met with a researcher in one of the top universities and he's developing a product um and this product is supposed to be um is it is a digital platform for consultation you know doctors if i e-medicine platform basically um for doctors to meet with their students, you know, very, very I think it's a quite a, an innovative uh, solution. Um, but he was not sure how to recruit doctors. He was not sure how to assess doctors. He had figured out how to um, get the patients. The patients were going to be his students, right? The, the students. So the institution is already adopting this solution and they have thousands and thousands and thousands of students. So that was already sorted out. But then they didn't have a way to um, assess doctors and they didn't figure out what the motivations for doctors will be, stuff like that, right? Now, but then he had already finished building his solution, almost already finished building it, just to launch it. So that was, um, that was no right. Before you finish building your solution and all that, figure out who your customer segments are going to be and figure out how to assess them. You have to be very, very, they have to be very, very accessible because then you can figure out certain things that would help you to design your product in the right way to serve the customer segment, right? So very important for you to note that your customer segment must be accessible to you. You cannot build a product for senators when you're somewhere in one village in Nigeria. You don't even you've not been to Abuja before. You, you don't know how to get to Abuja. So, uh, so how does that work, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that becomes difficult. Now the third question is: Does the target customer have a compelling reason to buy? Um, if you build a product where people do not have a compelling reason to buy, then you're going to that product is probably going to remain with you in your laboratory or in your workshop so you want to find yourself building a product that your customer is willing and is ha, have a compelling reason to buy to them this is an urgent problem i call it a hair on fire problem they must solve this problem or they solve it right they must solve this problem or they solve this problem. So you, that is the research you should be doing. That is the research you should be doing. You are not supposed to be doing a research that you eventually wanted to solve a problem, get to come to be commercialized for something that the customers can do without. Because we have many problems in the country. Why not just focus on the one that people have a compelling reason to, to use, right? So you want to make sure that the, the customer segment you're focusing on, they have a compelling reason to buy your product. They have a compelling reason to buy your product. Very important, very important. Then we go to the next question. Can you today, with the help of partners, deliver a whole product? And, and now this, is, this sounds simple, but it's a very, very, strategic question you must answer before you move out of the laboratory with your product. Can you today, with the help of partners, with the help of, of um, stakeholders, other stakeholders, deliver a whole product? Now I'm talking about what complementary product, complementary assets. Complement, is your product a whole product in itself? Is it a whole technology in itself? Really not so. So if your product is not a whole solution, it's in itself, then you probably would need 
complementary assets. You probably would need complementary products for it to become a whole product. Now, ask yourself, is this something that you can do? The partners, the persons that should give you this complementary product to make yours now a whole product, are they accessible to you? Are they persons with less risk of partnership? Now, now this is important. There are people that um, they have the complementary assets, but they are not the best persons for you to partner with. Because when you go to partner with them, they have what it takes to knock you out of business. Remember, you're a mere researcher, <laughs> right? <laughs> mere researcher. You may not have all the funds. You may not have all the you know, means to advance into the markets. And you need the cooperation of um, you know, other partners with the complementary assets. Question becomes, who are these partners? Do you have access to them? Are they people you can trust? Are they people you can work with, strategically speaking, to be able to deliver your product? So you ask yourself that question. Don't um, sweep this under the carpet. Don't finish your whole research, your entire research, come up with the products, and then figure out, oh, I didn't think about um, whose help and whose support I need to advance my products. Please don't find yourself in that situation. So um, this is one critical question. I don't know. I need to really emphasize on this. It's something you want to work, make sure you figure out from the beginning of your research, from the beginning of your research. Sometimes it's advised that if you don't have a strong intellectual property law in your country, um, I cannot say that Nigeria has a strong intellectual property law, then this aspect is should be taken very, very important. This aspect should be taken very, very important because sometimes your research will need an underlying technology for it to even be relevant, for it to even be relevant. So you begin to ask yourself that question. And some other times, people may want to build on your, on your own intellectual property for their own product to move out there. So if you don't have strong intellectual property laws, they may infringe on your intellectual property. But that's a discussion for another day. The point I'm trying to make here is that ask yourself the question, do you really have access to the partners and the technologies that will make your product a whole product? Very important. The next question you want to ask is, do you have a very strong competition that could hinder your progress and your success in the market you have chosen? Um, I'm going to be frank with you on this. Don't get into a market where there is strong, strong competition, where there is entrenched competition. What you may do is to rethink your strategy, your your um, market entry strategies, or your research commercialization strategies. Instead of you getting in there to compete, why not license your technology to them? Just license your technology to them. That is not, you're not supposed to go out there, start competing and all of that. That is why I said, look for non-consumers, build a new product for non-consumers. Simple, simple. Now, the next question you want to ask is, if you win this particular customer segment you have focused on, now, can you leverage it to enter into adjacent markets? Can you leverage it to now enter into bigger markets, into adjacent markets? Very important question because there is something we call the scale test. Scale test, and of course, economies of scale that is business, right? So, you want to make sure that yes, you're focusing on this particular segment for now, that's your beachhead market, but eventually, you can leverage on this market to now get into adjacent market. Adjacent market. So, that is the sixth question you want to ask for your market segmentation strategy, and the last one is. Is this something you're interested in? Is this something that you're is this something that is in sync with your um with your values? Is this something you're in sync with your purpose in life? Pursuing this thing, does it really does it really add to you, or is it just about the money? Is it just about the ribbon? Is it just about the gold? Right? So you want to ask yourself, 
um, I think that your research commercialization efforts should be in sync with your purpose in life, should be in sync with your vision in life, should be in sync with your values, right? So that's actually where it all begins. Why, why are you here on earth? What are you supposed to do? What problems are you supposed to be solving? Build your research around that, and then eventually make sure that this gets out there into the marketplace to solve the problem. So your technology becomes the vehicle through which you achieve your purpose. I've shared a lot already. I've shared a lot already, but I have now the real deal to share. The real, the real subject of the matter of tonight. I've only so far laid the foundation. Now this is the time for us to get into the main thing. And the main thing is what I call customer development. Customer development. Your efforts to commercialize your research as, as a researcher should be customer-centric. It should be a customer-centric process. And I've talked about the fact that as you begin to define your market entry strategies, one layer that is important that you pay attention to is the layer of customer development. That's the customer development layer. That is your, the first layer you should pay attention to. And um, so far, I've been giving you dropping principles and from principles and from principles and from principles. But now, I want to really get into the customer development uh, process, customer development process. There are four different um, steps, four different steps involved. So pay attention as we discuss these four different steps. I'm going to discuss them based on the objective of each step, objective of each step, the activity that you're supposed to do in that step, and the outcome that you should expect for that step. Four steps, four steps to develop your customer. Very important, four steps to develop your customer, right? For each of the steps, I'm going to discuss the objective of that step i'm going to discuss the chief activity you need to do in for that step and then finally the outcome you should expect so number one is the customer discovery um step the customer discovery step or the customer discovery stage these are the four stages i'm talking about the four stages involved in customer development why is this important because you need to build a customer centric process for your market entry strategy right it has to be customer centric and the first layer we're discussing is customer development. Another time we're going to take out as like funding and the rest. But for this one, we're looking at what customer de development, customer development, right? Now, talking about customer development, the, era, I'm, I'm, I, the, the first step is what customer discovery. You want to first of all discover your customer, discover your customer, discover the customer, discover the customer. That's the first thing you want to do. That's the first thing you want to do, customer discovery, right? So in this, the objective of customer discovery is for you to identify on the, and understand the potential customers for your research project, for your research-driven um, product, right? You want to understand who are these people. That is what we we'll talk about, identifying market opportunity and doing market analysis. And um, if you remember when I thought about the market readiness level, this is market readiness level one and two. Level one is market opportunity discovery. Level two is analyzing the market. Species. So these two steps, uh, these two levels talk about this first customer development uh, stage, which is customer discovery, right? Now that's the objective. We want to understand who are these people um, supposed to serve. If you don't understand them, then you cannot solve their problem. I keep saying this. Your goal is to explore the problem and understand who knows the problem, who has the problem. Know them. Know them very well. That is your that is your tool for conquering um, the, the, the spin out process. Very important. And you should also learn how to teach this to your students. Your students should understand that what is what is most important is what the problem to fall in love with the problem after falling in love with the problem then fall in love with the customers the people that own the problem then the third rule is was fall in love with what more people that own the problem so more customers <laughs> these are the three rules the three love rules for research commercialization but, but that's by the way 
Now we're talking about the objective. The objective here for this customer discovery stage is to identify and understand these people you want to solve their problem. Now, what is the activity you're supposed to be doing at this stage? The activity you're supposed to be doing at this stage is to go out there and engage with them directly. Go out there, engage with them directly. Talk to them. This is what we call deep interviews. Deep interviews. I don't recommend. Um, I don't recommend questionnaires. I don't recommend questionnaires. I recommend you go out there and you grab a chair and you look them in the eyes and you talk to them to understand exactly what their problems are. After doing that, you are also expected to observe the environment. That is what we call ethnographic research. Understand who are these people? Who are these people? How do they live their lives? How do they cope with this particular problem? Is this problem a hair on fire problem for them? Is it a compelling problem for them? This is the problem you should build your research around. This is the problem you should build. Otherwise, it becomes difficult for you to um, move out there with your, get into the market with your, with your product eventually, right? Very important. Even if you are at the tail end of your entire research process and you have a product now you want to push out there, you should still do this. You should still go out there. Identify these customers, who they are, and identify how they're relating with the problem today. How are they solving this problem today? What rules are they breaking to solve this problem today? This is important for you to know and understand. The outcome of this stage is to do what? Gain insight into the target market and understand whether this problem you want to solve is genuine and whether it needs to be solved. It's not all the problems that you should solve. It's not all problems you should solve. In fact, by next week Saturday, one of the what we're treating on next week Saturday is to how to identify good problems, problems worth solving. But suffice it to say that at this stage now of the customer discovery, what is important, the outcome is for you to say, Oh, is this really a problem I should solve for this particular customer segment? Because now you have been able to interact with them. You have been able to observe them and they have been able to tell you all that they know about their problem it is now time for you to say this is the moment of truth now for you to say okay truly this is a problem i should spend my life researching and solving and moving a product out there for you see it's not all products that you should attempt to move into the market the first thing you do is what we call customer discovery if you have done customer discovery, ladies and gentlemen, you want to go to the next stage, which is customer validation. Customer validation. Customer validation. The primary aim of customer validation is to test and validate the assumptions you made during the customer discovery phase. So in the customer discovery phase, yeah, you say that, yes, um, women that are pregnant, um, are going to need my products. Women that are pregnant have so and so problem, and they are interested in having this problem solved. Women that are pregnant have a need for a transportation system to the hospital in their third trimester. This is the problem you want to solve, and you have gone out there, you have proven that pregnant women in rural places have a need for transportation in their third trimester. That is what you went out there to, to, to um, discover in your customer discovery stage. You understood these women, you understood the problem that they have. You understood how they've been trying to solve this problem in the past. That in the third trimester, they climb on bikes and you know the, the roads are not good, gallops and all of that. They, by the time they get to the hospital, they are so worn out, they're so distressed. And then the same thing happens on their way back. So they are it's, it's a frustration for these women. So you have observed how these women do this. Okay, you've gone out there, you've seen how they climb on bikes, you've observed the roads, you've observed, you've been able to even check their blood pressure at the time they have arrived to their destination. You see, right? Now, you, what has happened here is that you've been able to discover this problem, you've been able to discover the owners of the problem. But then that takes us to the second stage, which is called customer validation stage. In the customer validation stage, you want to be able to now 
test and validate the assumption because it's only an assumption that true that women that are in their third trimester in the rural areas would need what a form of what transportation you want to now validate it it's not enough to it's not enough to understand the problem it's not enough to understand who owns the problem it's not enough to discover the problem what you now need to do is to prove that this is really a problem you want to now prove that this is really a problem and how are you going to do it the activity you do in the customer discovery stage is to actually build a prototype build a prototype you build a minimum viable product you want to test these potential customers and you want to gauge their interest in trying to solve what this problem if that's what you want to do you want to come up with a prototype and your prototype may just be coming up with a kk a tricycle in this community you just go with a tricycle right and you give you place it at a price that you want to eventually charge and you want to see okay would these women pay three times the amount they would have used on bike Right, would they pay three times that amount to be on uh, an AKK? So that's what you want to now test. It's not enough to discover they have a problem. It's not enough to discover that the, the roads are galloping. It's not enough to discover all that. You want to also prove that you have a problem that they're interested in solving. So when you bring your KK, you find out that three times the, the price of bike, they may not. It's not so important to them that they can sacrifice three times the price on um, buy. You see, um, because they, they don't, they don't, they don't have the money, or they have other priorities, and they don't see this to be a life or death problem, right? <laughs> so, but if you were to do it for free, they would do it anyway. So, so then you have something to validate, right? then you need to find out who will pay for it. But that's a different discussion. You want to go ahead and validate that this is a problem that they want to solve. This is a problem they want to solve this. So by the end of the day, the outcome is that what? You should have a clear understanding whether the demand of your product or your service re actually resonates with the target customer, with the target market. Is there, is there a connection between the need and the seed? Is there a connection? between the problem and the solution is there a problem solution fit this is important that's the second stage and that is a stage we call what customer validation customer validation you must be clear that there is a connection you must be clear there is a connection and this you have to do before you go raising money to build your product and push it out there in the market very important very important very important very important but then that takes us to the third stage which is called customer creation customer creation now customer creation focuses on what you acquiring and converting customers based on the validation uh, validated value proposition so you have validated your value proposition in the in the previous stage of customer validation at this stage you now want to actually go out there and acquire these customers remember that let's say that it's true that these women are willing and they are able to pay for this they want your product they're willing to pay three times the price of buy okay so you now want to do the next thing which is what customer creation you want to actually go out there and come up with what marketing and sales strategies to reach the target customers and you want to convert them into actual paying customers you want to really now say okay fine i'm going to get my first 10 customers and I'm going to create a system through which they are going to exchange money. That's customer creation. Exchange money for my product. So you bring, you actually go out there, create a system for these people to pay you some money for your product. And we, ladies and gentlemen, we're discussing market entry strategies. You don't just go out there, launch a product, and expect people to pay you without first of all doing market discovery, doing market validation. Okay. So the point where you are launching it. Where you're launching it, where you're piloting it, where you're piloting it is the third stage in customer development. Here you're building your sales and marketing strategies. Here you have been able to, the outcome here is that you, 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 you're, you're coming up with a scalable process to show that you can rope in customers. 
you can open customers and they can pay for your product in a system that is proven to work right so you're starting with 10 customers and you're you, you, you're validating this system you're sure that this system can work even if you're going to be serving a hundred a thousand a uh, ten thousand one million customers right it's at this stage you're creating customers at this stage this is the stage of early launching okay initial launching and your target here is to get the early adapters that's 2.5 to um 16 percent of the market that is your interest that is your interest these are the people you want to capture you want to create a sales and marketing system that is scalable eventually that is able to convert people to to actual paying customers this is what your purpose is at this stage people have um lecturers have argued with me that some of our products since they are made in nigeria that we, we're not going to find people nigerians don't like to use made in nigerian products and i don't quite agree with this i think it's because they don't understand the process once you get to market creation um sorry customer creation you're not looking to get the entire in the market you're you're interested in just about 2.5 percent to about 16 percent of the market these are the early adopters you just want to Want get want to get to them in order to prove your system to build a scalable system and a scalable structure that can now stand to add, to get in what the early majority into your market space, into your customer base. Very important, very important. So that initial tiny bit of the market is the is your target, is your focus. All right. So once you're able to get to this, then you go to the final stage, which is company building. It's, the objective here is for you to build now a startup, create a company now out of this. This is now the time that you're going to start discussing with your with your institution about the percentage, you know, you assign them the percentage you need to own, you build your board of directors, you register your company, and you make sure at this time you have a commercial team. This is not what you're supposed to now be doing because you already have a paying job with the government as a lecturer, right? So at this stage, you're stepping aside as an advisor in the board and you're pushing forward your commercial team. Your commercial team will then go out there and drive this team because they want to build a successful product that is going to grow and expand into new markets, right? Stick up more markets now, getting the early majority into your customer base very important so activities here would be what hiring the right talent your 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 goal here now is to hire the right talent your focus is shifting now from the customer right to your to internal now to building the structure the platform that is going to move um uh, this forward right move your vision forward and expand it right so it's to build the processes build the structures raise funding now, this is when you're going to go ahead to raise funding and to expand your pressures, all right? Expand your pressures, raise funding, and all of that. This is what you're doing at the company creation stage. The outcome of this is to, for you to what, create a robust and a scalable business model that can now grow out there and adapt to changing market conditions. But it has to be what a sustainable business model. It has to be a scalable business model, a business model that can that can expand into new markets expand into adjacent markets right so that robustness is what your focus is now to get the right talents and to build a solid structure for your for your business this is the last stage in customer development process in customer development process and once you're able to get to this point you are already in the market and you have even reached the um market readiness level eight which is for you to now get out there and start learning you would have dominated the market the tiny market you have selected and then you continuous learning and learning and learning and learning and learning and learning okay very important that um, you understand these processes to um to get into the market get into the market with your research with your spin out technology all right thank you very much guys so this is the customer development layer Subsequently, we also look at other layers involved in getting into the market, 
with your research, with your products.